All right, guys, we got a long week ahead of us. We've got a lot of things to manufacture. We got four parts, four people. We've got to break up into teams. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's do it. On the last episode of the Aliens Power Loader series, we signed a partnership with Caterpillar and took a trip down to Battlefield Equipment Rentals to pick up our CAT 239D. This compact track loader checked all of our boxes for the ideal drive system for the power loader. We tore off the cab, the lift arms, and a whole bunch of wires and are now left with this. And of course, we already have this. Now, we just need to put the two together. I've spent the last few weeks working on the design and it consists of four major components. The base plate, the legs, the chest, and the roll cage. We all know Rome wasn't built in a day and I'm pretty sure one guy didn't do it by himself. With that said, I'm at a point where I could use some fresh eyes on this design. These days, it seems that most of my time is taken up working on this power loader. I do need some time to unwind though, and what better way than to engage in massive tank battles with the global community. World of Tanks is free to play, and with over 550 tanks to choose from, the action is different every time. So team up with friends and destroy the competition. Sign up today using my link below and experience the same thrill as 100 million players worldwide. All right, well, I just wanted to thank you for taking some time out of your day to come join me for this design review. I just needed some fresh eyes on the design and hopefully you can give me some feedback so we can make this power loader as awesome as possible. I've broken up the design into four individual pieces. We've got the base, which is actually the mounting plate that's gonna go onto the Caterpillar to actually uh, hold and spread the weight of the legs. Uh, then we've got the legs, which is basically gonna be from the knee up. So what's actually interesting is when you scale the real power loader, it's a one-to-one -one scale, and where Ripley actually has her feet planted where it is roughly around, uh, around the knees. So it'll actually sit right about there. Uh, is where your feet are going to be, and then the base is actually a four inch box tube. So the height and everything of, the, of this entire design will be exactly the same as in the real movie. The, these two legs, the, the bushings will be able to hold about 120,000 pounds um, in terms of straight downward compression. So that should be way more than what we need. Um, then on top of that, there is the chest. So the chest actually builds up on top of the H-frame that currently holds the two arms. And it just builds forward, it's all using box tubes, so it's really, really simple to actually construct. Uh, then there's just some sheet metal around it to give it the look. And then the bottom is basically four half-inch plates that actually have a single tube that goes all the way through the bushings to allow it to uh, join to the bottom of the legs. Final part is the cage. The cage is just made out of some one and a quarter inch round uh, tube. How hard would it be to have it hydraulic or pneumatic so you press a button and it's like... Whoosh. We have the whole hydraulic system on there so it's just not an extra valve. It shouldn't be that difficult. The, the bigger thing is like if it's also closing hydraulically, you don't want to like get pinched. I like the sound of a gas strut over a hydraulic. Yeah, that, that, I think when we go with the gas strut, it's cheaper, it's easier. If we want to change it to hydraulic at some point to have it like... We can but trying to figure out how the gas rod's gonna perform at all the different angles and how much lifting weight you need and stuff like that and trying to pick that, it sounds complicated. Designing a power loader, easy. Designing some struts to open up a hatch, oof, don't even wanna try. So the final design will look somewhere, or something like this. What was that sound on his chest? <laughs> okay, great, so if you guys don't have any more concerns, I guess I'll start exporting this over the weekend and then hopefully for Monday morning, we'll be ready to start manufacturing. Awesome. I'm sure the commenters will leave a lot of feedback for you. It's after it's done being built. <laughs> if you're a member and would like to see this entire design review, check out the link in the description below. If you're as picky about the details as I am, you're gonna love World of Tanks. It's historically accurate. The tanks are authentic models and feature characteristics that will make you feel like a real general. If you're a new player and register on the Wargaming portal using my link below, you're gonna get 250,000 credits and seven days of premium access. All right guys, we got a long week ahead of us. We've got a lot of things to manufacture. We got four parts, four people. We've got to break up into teams. Tyler, you're on plasma cutting. Dave and Chris, you guys are on the chest and I'm gonna start with welding. Hopefully by the end of the week, if we all work hard, we're gonna be able to get a full power loader completed. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's do it.
That's like a quarter of a leg, yeah? All right. I just know in my head just how much there is to do and like I'm seeing all this progress and I'm like we're not even like scraping the surface of it. Treads can get you places wheels can't, which is good because in World of Tanks there are over 40 different battle arenas. Take your tank across open fields, climb steep hills, sneak through forests, tear across deserts and pick your battles in urban industrial zones. If you sign up using my link below, World of Tanks will get you off on the right foot or tread by getting you three rental tanks for 10 battles each. I'll see you on the battlefield. This is part of the roll cage. So this is gonna go over top and we need to assemble this to get the correct sizing for this. And this is gonna be the chest, which this attaches to. Once we have that, we can put it in the, uh, the forklift tubes. And once the forklift tubes are in, we can start assembling the chest pieces, which are gonna be a lot of work. It seems like there's an order to this. Oh yeah, everything is like a puzzle. Like. Right now we're, we just finished this piece. And so now we're waiting for that piece that Tyler's grinding. And then the box tubes go right through there. first face of the chest piece. So the actual driver is gonna sit right about there. So because these have to hold the entire upper body, these have to be stronger than what the upper body can hold because they gotta hold whatever the upper body's holding plus the upper body. So they end up becoming heavier and heavier and therefore the caterpillar is so important because if we were to design something like like legs or even our own treads, there'd just be so much steel. We don't have the equipment to move it. I'm just glad that we got that machine and we don't have to design anything from scratch. Just a quick sanity check. Don't you just love it when things come together?
you have a body. This is 1,200 pounds of steel. I have no clue how we're going to move this. Daryl, how are we doing the outro shot? Uh, you said you wanted that over there? I have an idea. Whew. That was a super productive week. It went so well. We got a ton of work done. And I'm pleased to say that after two full years of working on the power loader, we finally have all the pieces required to put it together in the next episode. We've got our chest. We've got our legs. We've got our base plate. We've got all the arms, the roll cage. We've got the entire hydraulic circulatory system. We've got all the wiring. And next week, we're gonna put it all together and we should have a working, standing power loader. You don't wanna miss this, so make sure you're subscribed. See you in the next one.